on Pujanam. Really speaking, Maharshi should talk about what they call Shoda Sopachara Puja. In a formal puja, which the pandits, the priests, the archakas do, there are a lot of steps. Some Mangala Shloka, Bhuto Chatana, and uh, preparing the place. Then slowly, maybe some Ganapati Avahana, invoking Lord Ganesha. Then slowly, some Achamana, sip some water, some Argya, wash the hands. And then to God also you offer water for Him to wash hands, for Him to wash His feet. Padhyam samarpayami, argyam samarpayami, achamniyam samarpayami. Then you give, you know, many, they are called upacharas. Just like in olden days, a guest would come to your home walking a long distance. You give water for him to wash his feet. And then you give him first some water to drink. These are like hospitality. So, puja actually formally consists of so many upacharas, forms of hospitable treatment. Abhisheka, vastra, new clothes are given, chandana, kumkuma, akshata, and uh, you know, food, most important. Many people, more than God who receives the puja, people who attend the puja are very keen to see what prasad, what naivedyam is being offered because they are looking forward to enjoying that later. Food to God, food is offered, naivedyam. And then you have mangalarati. So many steps. But amazingly, Sri Ramana Maharshi does not talk of that puja at all. He completely acknowledges we know from his life and other teachings, but in Upadesha Sara, where he is very concise and he goes straight to something that is very primary, the very essential part, details you may find anywhere else. Therefore, in the second shloka which we already read, Maharshi takes a leap. He says, your puja, your pujanam, may begin in various ways. In your own house, if morning after taking bath, you go to a tulsi plant, go three rounds, suppose somebody does that. That is also pujanam in this context. Once more, anything where body is involved, speech is involved, mind also is involved, is pujanam. Then there is the formal puja. So, you may begin with that. And as you get going, as you go ahead, you will find that God is not limited to the idol, not limited to a pratima. God is not limited to either your puja room at home or a temple in the town. God, of course, is all pervasive. And God is in every living being. God is even in inert things. Ghat Ghatame Swami, Pata Patame, every pot. Ghata can mean pot, Ghata can mean human body also. <laughs> in every body, in every one, that is God. So, puja, as you and I advance inwardly, our puja also goes to greater and greater heights, and that is where the fifth mantra that we read says, Deva Poojanam, the last word of that fifth mantra is Deva Poojanam. Worship of God, as it advances to greater heights, takes the form of seeing the entire Jagat. Jagataha Ishadhiya, Jagata Ishadhi Yukta Sevanam. Looking at the whole universe, looking at or the whole world, with the dhi, dhi means buddhi, dhi means understanding, with an unwavering understanding that it is all God. The good people are also God, the bad people are also God. Not easy in early stages. At best we will see God in somebody who has always been kind to us. 
at best you and i see god in somebody who has been a maha buddhu even though we have harmed him he has not been unkind to us let us say then one day with tears in our eyes we say to him or her for me you have been god i actually deceived you couple of times once you knew also and yet you have continued to be good to me you are god to me ha with great difficulty at least you saw god in such a person who has been unconditionally forgiving to see god in others and in those who find fault with us is next to impossible but then spirituality assures us what is impossible today can become possible tomorrow nothing is impossible forever it is impossible at this moment we understand therefore jagatah sevanam serving relating with the world ishadhi yukta sevanam yukta means endowed with yukta means having having ishadhi ishvara buddhi therefore in sanatan dharma hills are also god rivers are also god though unfortunately in india today everybody notices that and critics make a big issue of it they worship ganga but also so much dirt is left into ganga some time back some nri said come to varanasi i was living in varanasi some people from san francisco bay area or bay area had come and i accompanied them to ganga aarti and it got dark and we all were on a boat on ganga and the aarti was taking place on the bank of ganga and it is matter of shame even as these people who were originally from bihar but settled in california were with me i was also over there and we are seeing ganga aarti we saw something floating <laughs> near the boat and i said it must be some broken piece of a tree some branch of a tree but this lady she was not from california relative of this group from patna she was a you know i think she was a teacher of either biology or anatomy or something she had knowledge of human bodies she said to me swami ji sorry to say i deal with the dead bodies all the time see properly it is a dead body and i rubbed my eyes and again saw it was indeed a dead body having said it let me hasten to clarify there is a misunderstanding that dead bodies are thrown into the ganga river it is not so no body half burnt etc is pushed into the river that is never done but how did this happen i spent 10 years living in kashi and i have gone on the ganga on boat some 100 or more times i saw a dead body two or three times only how did those dead bodies come it is typically somebody would have committed suicide a few miles you know upstream so that body would have come floating there is a certain negligence on the part of authorities they may not quickly dispose it off so that body also as i closely saw i could see a torn jean pant also of that fellow some fellow had probably either committed suicide or this fellow um, might have been murdered and pushed into the in some village upstream you know and uh, at the time of the ganga aarti it had <laughs> floated and come and pretty soon in a, within a minute we also got some bad smell too so critics of hinduism sometimes find fault but you and i must understand that these are all unfortunate what we call poor practice ill practice distortions these are not the true spirit of hinduism you worship a river and you also have to clean keep that river very clean in recent times the government of india has even opened has started a ministry for ganga 
as a separate minister for improving conditions in Ganga, of Ganga Devi, and lot of things are happening. It's a bit hard for old habits among poor people are an obstacle. That is a little digression. Let me tell you that the spirit of nature worship is something where there is no room for spoiling or polluting either a river or a hill and so on. But poverty, overpopulation and some corruption lead to this. On the slope of say Arunachala hill in Tiruvannamalai, Maharshi Ramana lived by the base of the hill. There are also a lot of unauthorized occupation. So much, some kind of slum area has developed in a portion of the Arunachala hill in Tiruvannamalai. And as you know, it is all sometimes some politics too. All of them promise a politician, we will vote you in the next election. Alas, then he, foolish fellow, he protects them. He prevents the machinery of law and order, justice, from evacuating them. So without making it a social commentary, it is not according to the Shastras. So, Jagataha Ishadi Sevanam, Ishadi Yukta Sevanam, and Maharshi himself employs an expression that is found in other ancient scriptures, Ashta Murti Bhrata Deva Poojanam. Ashta Murti Bhrata. That means Ashta is eight, Murti is forms. So there is an ancient expression in some Shastras which Maharshi borrows. This entire universe in a manner of saying, there are many ways of saying, but one manner of saying is made of eight forms. Five of them are the five elements. Akasha, Vayu, Jala, Agni and Prithvi. Space, air, fire, water and earth. Then sun and moon. Then Jiva. Jiva Tattva. Individual soul in every one of us. Therefore, wherever you see, it is the five elements or the Jiva Tattva. Look up, it is the sun or the moon. Though you may say, but the sun and moon are also made of the five elements. So that's why I said in a manner of saying, for their own reason, they gave an exclusive special position to sun and moon. So, Panchabhuta, Surya Chandra and Jiva, Deva Poojanam. So this is the advancement. As you and I evolve, our puja goes way beyond the puja room, etc. and embraces the entire creation. Therefore, to look at the whole creation as God's manifestation is the highest form of puja. You and I should not say, then I will begin with that. That is where it culminates. If we say we will begin with this and give up our daily puja, if we are doing something, that would be suicidal. Then there is an expression, ito brashtaha tato brashtaha. You are neither here nor there. In North India they say, na ghar ka na ghat ka. Neither at home nor at the bathing ghat of a holy river. Where is he? God knows where is he is. Lost from here, lost from there. <laughs> that would be sad. So, we have a wonderful pithy and advanced insight into puja. At its height, puja is looking at the entire universe as God. Without wasting time, Maharshi proceeds to the second level. First level involves Kaya Vang Manaha. Second involves Vang and Manaha. For which the name for the whole category is Japa. See, elsewhere Japa is Mantra Japa, Nama Japa. But here Japa is a lot of other things also where there is speech and mind both involved. Therefore, chanting bhajan. We began the program yesterday and today with a bhajan. 
That is also Japa in this classification, in this terminology. Now, if you understand this terminology, wherever there is a spiritual exercise, where speech and mind both are involved, then it has many levels. So, next two shlokas give to us a glimpse into forms of vachika bhakti sadhana. Uttamastava uchamandataha Chitta jam japa dhyana muttamam Uttamastava uchamandataha Chitta jam japa dhyana muttamam Chitta jam japa Adhyadharaya srota sasamam Adhyadharaya srota sasamam Sarala chintanam 